Welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, we're looking at displaying images in an Instagram gallery style. We're using Hugo and we're using Bootstrap 5. The style of displaying images in a grid with a margin between them, all evenly laid out in squares, has been made popular by Instagram as well as some other online social media platforms. Let's have a look at how we can do that in Hugo with Bootstrap 5. So for this video, you'll need to have the latest Hugo and Visual Code Studio Code set up. And I've got a video on installing that software. I've got a link that I've placed above that you can use if you need help with that. And after completing this video, you'll be able to use .resources.by type to access all the images in a page bundle. And we'll be able to display images in a grid layout with Bootstrap. To get started with the course, I've left a link in the description below. You'll need some code to get started with this particular tutorial. I've created a really basic Hugo project and I've put a bunch of photos that I've downloaded off unsplash.com. They're royalty free photos. I've put them into the content folder for you. You'll have to download the code. We've got the green code button there. You can download a zip file or you can clone the repository if you're a more advanced Git user. And then we're ready to get started. Before we start, a quick message from this video's sponsor. As a Skillshare teacher, I've partnered up with them to offer you a free one month trial using my link below. I personally produce full length Hugo courses on Skillshare on a variety of topics and there are many other great teachers on Skillshare ready to help you level up your skills for your next big project. Click on the link below for the one month free trial. You can cancel at any time and you'll be helping out this channel. I've tried to leave this as bare as possible. If you look in the content folder you'll see we've got a gallery and there's a bunch of images I've downloaded off unsplash.com. They're royalty free images but we need to create a markdown file for that page. So I'll run Hugo new or we'll place the file in gallery slash index.md and we've got our index.md file. We need to have a look at creating the layout. So what we'll do is we'll create a type for the gallery and we'll call it gallery and then go into our layouts and we'll create a folder called gallery which matches the type and then we'll copy our single.html into there. We'll then look at creating a variable called images, colon equals, dot resources with a capital R, dot by type with capital B and capital T, and the type will be image. And I'll put some dashes either side of that so it doesn't create any more HTML. We'll then grab that and create a new row with dot row. We'll paste that in and then we'll do a range. And we'll range over images. We'll put our end tag in before we forget. And we'll create a column with dot col six. And then for medium, so we'll do col dash md dash four and for excel we'll make it three so we'll do dot col dash excel dash three and then we'll add padding below of three and padding either side of two now to create our image tag so img and the source we'll put in double curly braces it will be dot rel permalink, capital R, capital P. And for the alt, we'll just make it a gallery image. We'll add width. That will be dot width with a capital W. Because we've used Hugo image processing, we get a width. And we'll do height inside the double curly braces dot height with a capital H. And that helps with the reflow. The browser will know the actual size of it based on CSS. Now we do need to add a class IMG fluid. We are actually putting in some pretty big images. They'll work on any screen size. If you want to learn about responsive images, I've got my course on Skillshare and I go through the whole process of all the different options and how to create a partial so you can automate this process. So we'll save that 
and then we'll run Hugo server and we'll have a look. Then we'll create a menu link for it. So we'll have to, in our markdown file, do menu main and then we'll do a weight of 20 because our main menu will be, our home page will be 10. I'll just go into the config. And there's no conflicts there with the weight of the menu. So we'll save that and then we'll run the server. Here you go, server, and we'll have a look in the browser. We'll go to our gallery. You'll notice that they're not all the same aspect ratio. That's all right, we'll go ahead and we'll fix that up. But currently we've got our CSS looking quite good. Have a look at the responsive nature of it. As we make the screen narrow, you'll see that we go from two to three and off to four. And if you, so let's have a look at changing the aspect ratio so all the images are square. So we're gonna now put the code in to change the aspect ratio to square. The fill function in Hugo actually uses a smart method to determine what the most important part of the image is. The first thing we'll do is we'll go into our range and this is only for an aspect ratio of one by one if you want to use different aspect ratios you'll have to look at my course on Skillshare on image processing and I go through all of the options so what we'll do is we'll first of all look at a conditional and if greater than dot width dot height and we'll put a comment in there. If width is greater than height, we'll put some dashes in there. So we're currently ranging over images. What we'll do is we'll create a variable called image we can access and then we'll modify it here so we'll do image equals dot fill and then we'll use printf and what Hugo requires is width times height so we'll put in percent %d times percent %d and because in this particular example the width is greater than the height will provide the height twice because that's the smaller of the two so it'll be height times height we'll make it square based on the height which is a shorter edge we'll then look at the else and we'll put a comment in And that's if the height is greater. And we can copy in that line, indent it, and this time we'll provide the width twice because that's the shorter edge. We then need to access image.rel permalink, and then for our width, it would be dollar sign image dot width and for the height it will be dollar sign image dot height I'll then indent everything inside the range just to make it a bit clearer and then we'll have a look in the browser so it's looking really good now that everything is it's all the same aspect ratio we'll have a quick look at the source and you'll see it's pulling in the width. We've got even width and height. Obviously, there's big, big images that I wouldn't be uploading. I'd be optimizing the size of those images first. And like I said, I've got my course on Hugo Image Processing and Responsive Images, and I go through all of these things. Let's have a quick look as we bring it down. You'll notice that all the content moves further down the page. Then we'll go to three, and it all shuffles up. You can adjust that. We've got our Col 6. And that's for when we're at our smallest. You'll see how we've got half the screen, col six. And then we go to medium, it becomes four, which is a third, because it's four out of 12. So that's the 
MD breakpoint um, for XL and above. So that's for medium and large. And then for XL and above, it is three, which is one quarter. So you can adjust that there in the actual column and that, that code, those classes get reproduced every single image. So with Hugo, it's really easy because we're putting it into a range, which is also known as a loop. You've only got to put that code in once. And a quick note, in the .gitignore file, you'll most likely want to ignore resources. That way when you go to commit to git, you're not committing all of the resources which were just generated. If you look in your resources folder in images, you'll see all of the square versions of the images. And you most likely don't want to commit those to git unless you're running an online build with a provider such as Netlify, then it can be advantageous to commit those files because it means they don't have to be built online. But in any other case, I wouldn't commit them to Git because it's just going to increase the size of your repository. So that's it for this week's video. Remember to hit that bell notification button and like and subscribe to the channel. If you've got any questions, please leave them below in the comment sections. More than happy to answer any questions you've got. Otherwise, that's it until next week.